Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to talk to you all about how I make $20,000 a year doing almost nothing. So this is all about passive income. And passive income is nothing about my main job or anything that I do working full time. So of course, I gotta preface this with the fact that I was able to do this because of the fact that early on I saved, I invested, and I just watched things grow over time and just maintained it. And just, it's kind of like a plant, right? You put the seeds down and once the seeds grow, you make these beautiful fruits. So this is essentially what I'm doing is, this passive income is the fruits of my labor, uh, if so to speak. Once these four passive income streams came through, they've been relatively good. So with that said, let's get started. YouTube, this channel here that you're watching right now, is my first income stream. It brings in $4,200 a year, and it's classified as royalty income, where royalty income is where the ads from the video would pay like royalties. It's like a license on your video for everyone watching it. And then you get paid from all those impressions and the ads, and then that comes back to you. So royalty income, started it in 2012. Had one particular video go viral. This was a Hyundai Equus. It was a luxury car right before Hyundai turned into the brand Genesis. Um, that video got 30,000 views in one day. And from there, YouTube was like, we gotta monetize you. So I clicked accept, I said yes. From there, channel was monetized and I had a bunch of issues trying to figure out what kind of ideas I needed. I spent hours, days, weeks, filming random content, just putting it up and seeing what would stick. Ultimately, not everything stuck, but then there were some that I didn't really expect to stick actually stuck. So for me, YouTube was very weird for me at the time. It's like, um, okay, car video, nope. Uh, travel video, oh wow, that blew up. I'm gonna upload more travel. And then back to cars and back to travel. And then that's how I came up with my banner, cars, travel, technology. And now it's just ultimately my lifestyle here. And me talking to you guys all about passive income now. Just a recap of my YouTube history. Back in 2012, I, was, I said I was making 10, I got like 10 views a day. And then 2013, it was 200 a day. Then that became 500 a day. And then 1700 a day. And then in 2018, it was like 4,000 a day. And then in 2019, 4,500 per day. That's how many views I get. And from that, I've been making consistently $500 a month off this channel alone. Just me talking to you guys in front of this camera and filming my experiences in Texas, on cars, on travel, on technology, $500 a month. And for me, I would have never thought that was possible way back when. And I saw another video on another YouTuber that took it super seriously, making $163,000 a month. Kudos to Graham Stephan doing that. For me, I'm still trying to find my niche, but hopefully this will be the niche for me. So yeah, it's really finding sustainable stuff on YouTube. But ultimately that is my first income stream. And as of 2019, I'm spending a, a bit less time. I know I spend like eight hours a month writing videos, filming them, editing them, and then uploading them ultimately. And here's a snippet showing on YouTube, I made $4,200 in 2018 on this passive income stream. For income stream number two, this is a rental property, so it's classified as rental income. This rental income is making me $11,340 in one year. And I started this in 2015, so the story goes like this. I paid $25,000 down for a house. The house was $115,000 in Las Vegas, Nevada. So for yes, those who are wondering, this house has a mortgage tied to it. But also it came with a renter because I had specifically wanted it to come with a renter. And the renter's been around a while, he pays on time, he covers the mortgage, the expenses, and he leaves some money in my pocket. So since I've owned it, I've probably had like one to two service calls per year, nothing like super major. The guy rents it, he pays $925 a month, well that's when he started, and then I've raised it to $945 a month, and the market rent for that is like 1,100 people tell me, you gotta raise it more, you gotta raise it more. But in my mind, I'm thinking, well, this guy's not problematic. He's been a long-term renter, he pays on time. I'm not gonna move this guy if I really don't have to. So I'm just gonna leave him as he is for now. Aside from that, this house works very well for my taxes as a tax shelter because of all the write-offs like depreciation. So let's consider all of this. In 2019 today, 
I spend less than one hour a month responding to calls and emails uh, just to make sure that everything's okay and the renter is happy. So that house I paid $115,000 for back then is now worth $100,000 more than it was back in 2015. So there's equity that if I sold it today, that would just come back to me in my pocket. Definitely not bad for a passive income stream. If you're thinking about real estate, just do real estate. You know, if you can find those good deals, you can do that BRRR strategy. That's something I wanna do, but I'm trying to diversify my assets between stocks and index and real estate and all that. So just balancing all three of them. So that's number two for you. And yeah, rental income pays monthly into my bank account coming from the renter through the management company. Number three is dividend income. And dividend income, I started this back in 2017 and it makes me $5,000 per year. So I got into dividend stocks because I know that with the real estate, I mentioned the word diversify as well. So I wanted to diversify my assets. So of course, if one goes down, um, not everything's gonna go down because I have assets in different classes. So I found a guy named Pat Rosenheim and he is the HYHRD, so that's high yield, high return dividend trader. And since finding this guy in strategy, I started off putting like $1,000 in dividend stock at a time. And that made like 10% in one year. So that little light bulb in my head, like, hey, you know, with this property that I had, it's making like 10%, this is making 10%, pretty good, right? You know, look at some of these and how they're diversified. Look at the equity strategy. Is it a bond? Is it investing overseas? Uh, there are different types of dividend stocks, but I was choosing like USA and ERC, which they pay like 10% and they're doing pretty well if you look at the chart over time. So that is how I balance it out as alongside some of the other stuff like long-term growth stocks that I have also. So out of this portfolio, this portfolio is worth $60,000 where I have stocks like this. And it's paying that $5,800 in one year, as I mentioned. So of course, you don't get the tax write-offs and benefits of having a rental property where you get to write off the depreciation, but it gives me peace of mind that I've invested in different asset classes and it's making a decent return for me to, you know, go ahead and buy another car. So of course, think about the opportunity cost behind these things. And as I mentioned earlier as well, diversification is key. So don't put everything in dividend stocks. Make sure to invest in like S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, Vanguard funds, as it will definitely help your portfolio in the long run. And here's a snapshot of the pay schedule of the dividends coming into my account over the next one year. $5,800, quite a lot. And that is a segue to number four, high yield savings account. So this is interest income. This is where the, you put your money in a savings account and the bank pays you interest because of the fact that you left money in that account. Started this in 2018 and I've been getting $62 a month out of this income stream. So what I did is, you know, being into personal finance, I rolled my six month emergency fund from one that was paying half a percent a year to something that was paying more than 2% a year. So think of along the lines like Ally Bank, SoFi, Wealthfront, they're paying, you know, like Wealthfront is paying 2.57% as I'm making this video. So take a good look at that. You may be missing out on some interest if you have some money sitting in a savings account. So I just take the money, park it in that savings account. It pays 2.5% in one year. And that gives me like $62 in a month. It's pretty good money. And to round it all off, here's the interest coming into my bank account as well. So now that I have described these four passive income streams and that's out of the way, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Like, which one is your favorite? Is it the rental? Is it the royalty? Is it the dividend? Or is it the interest? Uh, I want to know where do you plan to start if you don't have anything already? I want to know what you guys have. And I'd like to know that even with these financial assets that I'm talking about here and the passive income that I'm saying, this is not the only type of asset that you have. You should have some growth assets, some bond assets. Keep your portfolio diversified in case of market fluctuations, market downturns, etc. There's a lot of good articles you can read on Google. There's a lot of good YouTubers that say this information and I'm just one of them that just wants to share my experience on making this uh, $20,000 in one year doing almost nothing for these four passive income sources. 
So that's all I have to say in this video. If you found this helpful, please drop a like. Please drop it three times. Please comment down below, throw some mo down below. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell if you want to see more stuff like this. And yeah, you know, um, any comment helps. Let me know what you think. If I need to like change something about this or talk about more financial stuff or post more travel videos or do something else, um, let me know what you guys want. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.